Mr. James Gray. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise very briefly indeed, uh, simply to echo many of the remarks made by the Right Honourable Gentleman, the Member for Torfairn. I have a significant number of constituents who cannot understand why it is they are not being allowed to wear the PGM. They are puzzled by it. They believe it to be a genuine a medal, and it was in fact gazetted as being a genuine medal in the London Gazette of the 1960s. So I very much uh, agree with the Right Honourable Gentleman, but nonetheless, I am persuaded by the remarks of my honourable friend, the Minister, uh, that he does intend to examine the procedure by which these things are decided. And I rather agree with him that the uh, amendment which the noble lords have uh, put on the bill may not be the right way of addressing this particular problem. And I am therefore persuaded that I will support the Government in voting against uh, the Lord's amendment on the understanding that he will indeed carry out a genuine reconsideration examination of the process and that by, by that means he may well uh, help my constituents who are puzzled by the law which says they cannot currently wear the PGM. Yes. I'm grateful to the Honourable Lady for giving way and I'm amazed that she shows no tint of uh, political embarrassment about the blatant political opportunism of now promising to do something which her government refused to do for 13 years. But will she not be satisfied by the fact that my honourable friend from the front bench has announced that there will be a review of the PGM in particular, which is an important point, and that actually the amendment from the Lords is not about the PGM, it's about all Commonwealth medals. Surely she can understand that those of us who feel about, strongly about the PGM on behalf of constituents should be satisfied by the fact that the Government are now prepared to review it, something her party was never prepared to do. Yeah.